Hello guys, good evening to every one of you. So welcome back to another class, another day. And uh, well, today we finished another week and we just have one more week left. So the question that I always ask you, can anyone or can you all listen to me? Is it clear? Or do you listen to any kind of interference in the background? Is it clear? Hello? Yes, teacher. Ah, okay, great. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. So uh, it's really nice to see that you're here once again, guys. Thank you very much for, as I always tell you, for your responsibility and for being always there on time. It's always part of being responsible. So as usually guys, you already know that I will ask you questions regarding to the last topic, which in this case, it was about fry cell verbs, right? So yesterday we saw a little bit of, you know, those fry cell verbs. We saw also like the different differences that we have between one and other. We also saw some, uh, you know, some formulas and some things that were necessary for you to understand. So uh, let me ask you some questions regarding to that before we start. In simple words, guys, what is a phrasal verbs? Or what is that in simple words? Or what do you understand when someone tells you, oh, what's, what's a frisal verb? Or how do I form a frisal verb? Does any one of you remember how do we do that? Is the, the word informal? Is the word informal? Well, what do you mean? Or what do you want to say? Yeah. Um. In this, in this the moment is the 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 see the the yesterday the, the class mm -hmm. and because I know I understand very well but mm -hmm. I the uh, the example um, example the uh example -huh. um, um, I did say uh, the vomit an example. Oh yeah, yeah. Like for yeah, that that was an example. Yeah. Yeah, and and so says, um, I remember is the now uh, the the info of vomit out the 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 other the other work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for your opinion, Iris. So what about the others, guys? How do we form Reiselberg? Teacher. Uh, maybe uh, is big word that express grammatical relationship with other words. Of course, but uh, yeah, I mean that that's grammatical between one and another. Thank you very much. But I mean, is is there any particular thing that we use in, you know, in phrasal verbs? Is there any particularity about phrasal verbs? Teacher, define lexical, the meaning of the uh, someone words. Lexical, you want to know what lexical? Lexical is lexical, like, like the same in Spanish, lexical. Uh -huh. Como el léxico, uh -huh. eso lo dijo usted ayer en, en, las, en las fichas. Y me llamó la atención porque sea lexical meaning, o sea, como el significado léxico de algunas palabras. Yes. Que van acompañados. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, I can see Katya, I see the, the, your message on the chat. I hope you get better. I understand that, I mean, it's complicated like right now, if you have fever or something like that, I hope you get better. So thank you so much for letting me know. Um, okay, what do you guys remember about yesterday's topic? I mean, it was not fry cell verbs actually, it was something else. What was that? A personal object. Personal objects, mm, a little bit about it, but not necessarily. Does anyone remember? 
you don't you don't remember guys is that is that yes, oh. sir. i i i did see the the gesture of the class and at the moment it is a personal adverb with on the object verb on the object i mean that that's probably that's probably an a formula that you're reading but what was what was the main thing that was suggested or the thing that we were focusing on or the the tense or the topic that we were focusing on yesterday what was that he words teacher he words and what's what's the p word <laughs> what is that how do we how do we say the p word what's that uh, yeah i mean those but what what's what's the what's the p it's particles particles that what we saw yesterday so that was so what is a particle guys it's as noemi said it's a small or little word to what the particles are going to be next to what it looks like we're going to an exam like right now because it looks like you don't remember at all it's like you were not here yesterday your body was here, but your mind was not. So. Teacher, I, I have in my notes, particles are a question word that express grammatical relationship with other words. Uh -huh. It's only, I am right. That's, that's the only thing that you have. And now, if we focus on, or if we move to the phrasal verbs, which in phrasal verbs, we use particles. And how do we use particles in phrasal verbs? I put the word next to what? You don't remember? Nadie se recuerda. From particles, no? Teacher, Choque, no son, uh, for example, call off. Call off? Yes. I mean, lying, that's lying not a... This is an example. Those are not particles. Those are phrasal verbs. So if I say, put on, put on, what or which one is going to be the particle in there? Put on. On. It's a maybe we contain a preposition and no. <laughs> and not really. I don't remember. No, you it, it sounds pareciese que todos están perdidos, pero perdidos like about you know particles. So if I say something like take off. What is that? Take off. Okay, let me grab it on chat. So. Salir afuera. Salir afuera. Salir afuera. Salir afuera. Era como no repetir, no repetir lo mismo. O sea, no sé. Hmm. If I say take off. Like I put it on the chat. Si yo pongo take off, ¿cuál es el particle there? Stay or off, off, off. ¿Por qué? Because take is a meaning. It's, a it's, it's like the verb, but that's uh, the verb. And plus the off, uh, that's a meaning other action. Eso es lo que ya rato les estoy preguntando y nadie me había dicho. ¿Cuál era la posición de un particle en una oración? ¿Cómo identificaba yo un particle? ¿Lo ponía a la par de qué? That's what if, I'm asking. If I have four rules, teacher. If I have four rules. Objects set up. Verb, object, parsing. Hay cuatro reglas, four rules. 
verb object particles. Mm. Okay, but those rules are for what? Are for particles or for phrasal verbs? This is a verb, teacher. Phrasal verb, yes. So for phrasal yes, verbs. You are exactly, yes. Yeah. You're right, yes. <laughs> So we got we got to be. I mean, it looks like we're kind of confused right now, like like very confused. So now let me see. Um, as a matter of practice, or we're going to try to do it right now. I need every one of you to create one sentence using the phrasal verb throw away, throw away. We saw it yesterday. Está completamente prohibido utilizar el mismo que vimos ayer. So, create one on your own. Use the phrasal verb throw away. And of course, write it on the chat. That's what you have to do. Just write it on the chat. Your example, of course. And I will request your honesty, guys, as usual. It's okay, Maritza. I understand. I understand that it's raining. Me too, teacher. But I I will throw away to the sofa, uh, probably. Because my sofa is the arruinado, no sé. En vez de poner basura. Hmm. Mm, well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, remember that we're just going to use throw away. That's the, that's the only that we have to use. Do you remember what throw away means? Era recoger o tirarla, porque eh, the rabbit era basura. Entonces yo entendí que era como sacarla, hacer algo y tirarla. I'll throw away. I, uh -huh. I throw away the yes. rubbish is the example. But the rubbish, yeah, the rubbish was an example. But the, I will I will throw away the sofa or the other electronics. Yeah, that's possible. If you want to throw it away, you just throw it away. Yeah, it's it's fine. So, uh, Mayra, I, I would like to know what do you want to say when you say I throw away my studies? What do you want to say by that? What is, what is your purpose? Or, or, I mean, what do you want to say when you say something like that? Que no voy a tirar mis, mis estudios, pues que como que no lo voy a echar a perder. Mm. In that, in that context, we, we don't use like throw away, because throw, and there, eh, pusiste away, separado. Si tú dices eso, ya no es lo mismo. Entonces, ahí está, wow. tiraré un, una forma en mis estudios o tiraré un camino en mis estudios. So it doesn't say what you want. No, Va unido, teacher, lo que pasa es que mi, mi teléfono es muy pequeño. Oh, probably, but I mean, I see it here that it's not. So in that context, tiraré mis estudios, that's so Spanglish. Es, es, literalmente es, es lo que decimos like in Spanish, but it's not necessary, it's like not in English. If you want to say tiraré mis estudios, is that what you said? Lo voy a cambiar entonces. I usually throw away my shoes. Okay, that's good. I throw away the water. Mm, yes, why not? Yeah, it's possible. So I just got Mayra, Sonia Pinti, and Nivia. Y aquí tengo 23 personas. So what about the others? Será que los demás solo son... I'm sorry, what? Mi ejemplo se lo dije a usted. O hay que, hay que escribírselo. 
No, I mean, it's fine. I mean, I, I remember you said the sofa. Yeah. Okay. I always throw, I always throw away my backpack. Hmm. Okay. I'll throw away my, hmm. Okay. My life. When you when you when you say that Anna Noemi, I'll throw away my life. What do you mean? I'm sorry, que se pone la negativa, porque esa no traeré mi vida como um, como como que no me voy a descuidar o algo así o está mal mal dicho, teacher. Mm, okay, okay. <laughs> algo así es la idea. <laughs> I will throw away a old shirt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ok, I can see, puedo ver que hay como varios, hay unos mínimos errorcitos de gramática, pequeños. Like, for example, and the one that says, I will throw away a all shirt. In that case, no utilizamos the letter A, Edith, we use N, porque la palabra, el sustantivo que va después inicia con una vowel. So we say an all shirt. No a all shirt. Bueno, parece que los demás ahorita solo son fantasmas ahí, like there. Throw away. Mm, yes, only with throw away, Maritza. Yes. Yes, I will not throw gasoline from it. I will not throw gasoline from my car. Okay, I, I throw away my sandal. Okay. I look at the possibility of buying a new car the next week. One, okay. Juan, uh, Juan Eduardo, I want to know what, I mean, we're, we're only using throw away so i really don't understand your sentence i mean it's correct but what we're using right now is not past we're using a uh, phrasal verb which is the uh, the topic that we saw yesterday so i really your example is out of context right now okay so that's enough for today i mean some of you are just there. I just never see you participating. Some others are always participating. So as I tell you every single time, I take that into consideration. So if you don't want to participate, it's okay. It's okay, it's fine. Okay, so let me just go ahead and show you what we have for today. So guys, today we're going to have a different topic, but it's really easy actually because the majority of you already know that, and we're going to talk today about prepositions. Prepositions, I'm pretty sure that you already know some of them or the majority of them, because they are very useful for us when we speak English. Throw away the chairs with the lamp. Whose lights are those? Okay. All right, so just let me share the screen with you so you can have an idea. All right. So guys, today is our 12th class, and let me tell you since now. Déjenme decirle desde ahorita, and I will say this in Spanish, porque no quiero que después vaya a decir alguien que no entendió, okay? So, next week, la próxima semana, el día jueves, que va a ser nuestra última clase, la próxima semana, okay, I'm saying that again, tenemos un examen, ¿sí? Ese examen va a venir de todos los temas que hemos visto. Y es por eso que yo les, siempre les digo, participe, pregunte, cualquier cosa. Porque si usted nunca pregunta, si usted nunca participa, ¿cómo va a saber que lo que usted dice o lo que usted hace está correcto? So, that's up to you. Es de parte de cada quien. So, desde ya les estoy diciendo para que se preparen Sí, para que estén listos para ese día. I repeat once again, Thursday next week, which is going to be the last day of class. Ok. Si sí, estamos todos claros que jueves de la próxima semana, we have exam. Ok. All right. So, 
Let me just. Okay, teacher. Okay, put a full screen. All right, so here we have today, guys, prepositions for today. Yesterday we saw particles, and I mean, particles were, were not that difficult, so we saw different formulas for phrasal verbs, and today we're just going to go with the easiest topic, which is prepositions. We have uh, uh, some, as uh, like, you know, as uh, brief information, I, I can tell you that we just have three uh, main types of prepositions, which we are going to see today. There's, of course, a lot of prepositions which are not that used in the English language, or probably they are used, but not commonly used, okay? So we're going to have, first of all, a small, um, you know, meaning or definition of what a preposition is. Very easy. It says, okay, let me just go, okay. Prepositions are words which are going to always be used before a noun, noun phrase or pronoun connecting them to another word. So in simple words, we are going to say that prepositions are going to be little words that are going to help us to connect one word to another. Simple as that. That's in simple words. But today we're also going to have the different types of prepositions. So here we have kinds of prepositions. We have simple prepositions, compound prepositions, and here we have some examples. Simple prepositions are those words that we already know which consists in only one word. For example, in, on, at, with, against, etc. But we also have compound prepositions. What does compound mean? Compuestas, preposiciones compuestas. So when we have that, it's because we want two or more words that when they get together, automatically they form one preposition. So if, if I say something like instead of, that's a preposition. In the middle of, another preposition. By the side of, another preposition. So if, uh, as you can see here, they are not just one. We have actually either two or three words within the same thing which, uh, or when they get together, automatically they form only one preposition, okay? So remember, two kinds of prepositions, simple prepositions and compound prepositions. So we're going to have some examples here. I hope every one of you is able to see it. So uh, let me see. It is Regina, give me a number from one to 24. Give me a number from one to 24. Four. Four. Let me see, one, two, three, four. Andrea Mariela. I need you, uh, your help, Andrea Mariela, so I need you to make the pronunciation of the first two lines of these examples of prepositions that we have here. So let's go ahead, please. Um, okay, on, um, throw, I don't know how to pronounce this. Okay. Even, even though if you don't know how to pronounce them, say it in the way you think it is, even though it is not correct. Just say it. Throw, okay. behind, for, um, binet. <laughs> I don't know. Binet. Uh-huh, okay. And okay. In line number two. Okay. Beside, over, during, without, abroad, across. Now, Andrea, give me a number from one to 25. Um, 22. 22, okay, let me see. One, two, three, four. All right, so we have Melvin Jose. Are you there? Melvin it's it's very difficult to listen to you, sir. So no, it's, 
there's a lot of interference there. So, so I will probably ask you in, in the other in other time because right now it's very difficult to understand you. It's like there's a lot of interference in the background. <clears throat> Thank you so much for that. So let me see, I'm gonna choose another person. And here we're going to have Alberto Enrique there. Hello. Yes. All right, so go ahead and help me with line number three and line number four. Let's go. A mom, a guys, a Rome. At the end, at the bottom, between, behind, below, be inside. Okay, thank you very much. Now, Juan Eduardo Morán, help me with the last two lines. Corner, into, via, after, to, about, in, on, at, signs, will, under, over, right, left. Thank you very much. Now, let me see. I will do the same thing, but now it's going to be with William. Go ahead once again with line number one and line number two. Teacher. On, drop, behind, four, we net, against, beside, over, during, without, abroad, across. Thank you very much, Vidal. Let's go with line number three and line number four. A moon against around at the end at the bottom between behind below by inside. Okay, thank you very much. And the last two lines are going to be for let me see Silvia de Ramos. Silvia. Hi teacher. Go ahead. Um, bottom, between. No, no, no. Uh, the, the next line. This one here. Um, corner, into, via, after, to, above, in, on, at, signs, will, under, over, right, leave. Okay. Thank you very much, guys, for those who participated. Now. We still, um, eh, let me ask you these questions first. Era, es la primera vez que están viendo prepositions? It is the first time? No, teacher. No, okay. What about the others? Okay, the los, <laughs> is it the first time for you? Algunos sí, otros no. Yes. Okay, because uh, I mean, when it comes to pronunciation, we are really bad there. Pronunciation of some of them were not, were way too far. Estaban lejos de la forma en que se pronuncia. So let's see. Once again, cada vez que yo lo repito, esperaría que ustedes lo repitan en su casa. El motivo de hacer esto es para que de, cuando vuelvan a ver esas palabras, ya no las repitan de la misma manera. Pero hay veces sucede que la vuelven a ver dos veces después o un mes después y la vuelven a pronunciar como que nunca supieron. So we gotta be careful on that, okay? So let's go. We have on, through, behind, for, beneath, against, beside, over, during, without, abroad, across, among, against, once again, around, at the end, at the bottom, between, behind, below, by, inside, corner, into, via or via, after, to, about, in, on, at, since, while, under, over, right, and left. So now my question for you is guys, do you 
know or do you understand all the prepositions that we have here? Or is there any one of them that you are not able to understand? Or all of them are not understandable for you? Via teacher. Via is like, like in Spanish, like via is como like between or entre. Those are synonyms of between. Okay. Um, abroad. Abroad. When we say abroad, it's like uh, um, like in Spanish, it will be something like um, más allá de abroad. Beneath. When we say beneath, it's debajo, or beneath or bajo. Like that. So what's the meaning among? Among? Have you ever heard escuchado del juego Among Us? Yes, teacher. So entre. when we say entre nosotros. Pero entre mm -hmm. varios. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we say among is entre. So it's Porque mm -hmm. between is entre dos, ¿verdad? Pero yeah. among mm -hmm. is entre varios. Yes, exactly. When is that the difference? Is because one? like we are in the group, estamos en un grupo como acá, and we say among us, entre nosotros. There's someone among us. Or, si yo estoy entre dos cosas, o dos personas, o dos animales, I can say between, because you're between two things. Just two things. Any other one that you don't know? Okay, t-shirt. Throw. We don't we don't say throw, we say through. Through, I'm sorry. Through. Throw, okay. throw que es garganta. Yeah, what you said, lo que tú dijiste, Nidia, es garganta, yes. No, through. So through is por, through. Like for example, if you want to say, he pasado por situaciones difíciles. I've been through difficult situations. You know? También creo que se puede usar como a través de, ¿verdad? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Through. You can say that too. Mm -hmm. So if there's no any other question, guys, those are only examples, general examples, or some of the uh, most common prepositions that we have in the English language. Of course, there's some more, but uh, they are categorized in different types. So today, or we're going to move on to the different types. And here we have, or kinds. As it says there, there are three main. Of course, there's some others, but today we're just going to focus on those three. Which are they? Prepositions of place, prepositions of time, prepositions of direction. Probably some of you are going to get a little bit confused if you don't pay attention to that, because some of them are a little bit repetitive. And we are going to see that. So first of all, let's go to the prepositions of time. Today, we're just going to focus on three, which are the main ones when, when it comes to prepositions of time. At, in, on, okay? So in here we have the differences or the precise time where you're going to use them or the specific things where you have to use them. When we have the preposition at, it's because you're going to talk about a precise time. For example, if I ask you, what time does the class start? It starts at 8 p.m. It starts at 8 p.m. or 8 o'clock. Thank you very much. So now, when we use in, in, we're going to use it when we refer to months, years, decades, centuries, and seasons. For example, we have in May, in summer, in the summer, in 1990, in 1990s, in the next century, in the ice age, in the past, in the future. Ok, now, another thing. Creo que ya todos sabían que los números en inglés we say 2 plus 2, right? Yes, teacher. 
All right, very good. Now, uh, Juan Eduardo, hello. Yes. Okay, Juan, please go ahead and just tell me this part or just read this part of the preposition at. Just read it. Oh, I think that you're you're talking, but we're not listening to you. You have your microphone off. Price, price time. At Precise three time. Mm -hmm. Price, I, at price time. No, precise. Precise time. Okay. At three o'clock at 10, 30 and, and M. A.M. At noon, at noon, at dinner time, at the time, at sunrise, mm -hmm. at sunset, mm -hmm. and the moment. At the moment. Thank you very much. Now, guys, uh, another thing that I just heard. Vamos a ver. Let me see. Um, William. Hey, William. Now. Let me ask you this question. How do you make the difference between árbol and número tres? How do you pronounce those? Okay. Uh, árbol, three. Uh, number, número tres, three. That was, that, was, that was pretty good. Carlos Regalado. How do you say that? Okay. Uh, do you, uh, do you agree? Is that the accord? Do you agree what William said? Do you think the same thing? Is that the acuerdo con lo que él dijo? Is that is that the way we we pronounce it? Tres y árbol. Tres is three. Y árbol. Arboles. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, three and mm -hmm. three. Say it again. Three. Three and three. Three and three. Um, what you did, lo que, lo que acabas de hacer ahí, we can have, we, agregarle three? un poquito más de sonido. So, Boris. Uh, with with number three, uh, we can hear a little S three. Uh huh. In Arabic, in just we can say three. Uh huh. What about you, Anna Noemi? What do you think? I am thinking in the case of the three are. Sería árbol, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. eh, no se enrolla mucho la lengua como cuando mencionamos el número tres, que sería, por ejemplo, si decimos el, los números, ¿verdad? One, two, three. Entonces se menciona un poco la H, pero mm. la, la T como que es un poco muda. Ok, Maritza, ¿qué do you think, Maritza? Es que el árbol no lleva H. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Now, guys, three, no, uh -huh. three, three, the arbor, seria three. That was that was better, Nidia. Thank you very much. So guys, as you can see, in cosas algo algo básicas, we're gonna say it like that. Estamos teniendo problemas, ¿sí? How do we pronounce, cómo hacemos la diferencia entre el número tres? Very easy, porque lleva TH en la mayoría de las ocasiones. TH va a sonar Z en nuestro idioma. So, y el número tres, like three. So, three, three, con Z, three. So, that's what we have to say it. ¿Sí? Porque la mayoría siempre me pronuncian árbol cuando ven el número tres. So you don't make the right pronunciation. So we have to work on that. So let's move on. 
And let's keep on doing or moving on on the next uh, preposition, which is on. And these ones, we are going to use it when we talk about days and dates, okay? So remember, preposition of time at, when we are talking about precise time, preposition in, when we are talking about months, years, decades, centuries, and seasons. And preposition on, when we're talking specifically about days and dates, okay? So, um, questions? Okay, so I will move on. So let me see. Fisher, sure. sure. one mm -hmm. question. I'm sorry, what? O sea, sí, si yo quiero decir mi fecha de cumpleaños, si yo digo solo el año, entonces uso in, pero si digo la fecha completa, utilizo on. Yes. A según. Yes. Yes, that's what we're saying. Because if you say I was born in, I was born in what 1996, for example. But yes. if you say I was born on, you know, December 1996, something like that. You see, it changes. So we gotta be Thank you. all right. So now let me see uh Boris, go ahead and help me with number one. Then we got Iris with number two, Carlos Regalado, number three, <clears throat> number four, and let me see, one, two, three, four. Yes, let's go. Okay. I have a meeting at 9 a.m. Thank you very much. The stop clubs at, my, at midnight. There we say the shop closes, closes. The shop closes at midnight. The, the stop closes at midnight. No, it's not stop, it's shop. Shop, the shop closes at midnight. Okay, thank you very much. Now, number three. They went home at lunch time. Thank you very much. Number four. Juan. Juan Eduardo. Yes, that's you, Juan. In England, it often snows in December. Thank you very much. I mean, this is just, uh, these are general examples in which we're using just the prepositions. Now let's move on to prepositions of place. And these ones, we have this. Prepositions of place, we have in, on, under, next to, behind, in front of, and between. So as you can see, once again, we, we are repeating in and on. Si se fijan, otra vez volvemos a repetir in and on. En este caso, o en prepositions of time, su significado cambia. Why? Porque ya no me estoy refiriendo a tiempo, me estoy refiriendo a lugares. So, even though, aunque parecen lo mismo, and of course it's the same, son los mismos, su función en estas cambia. Why? If I say in, si yo utilizo in, aquí es porque yo estoy hablando que algo está Dentro de algo. And if I say on, es que algo está encima de algo. So as you can see, the use, el uso, cambia de ser preposition of time a ser preposition of place. Do we understand that? Si entendemos, right? So it's like we have the images there. Tenemos las imágenes ahí, so it's not that difficult to understand them. So it just once again, in, on, under, next to, behind, in front of, between, okay? So as you can see here, that was, uh, this, this was, uh, Arabin was talking about this. He was saying that when we use between, is because we have two things and we're talking specifically about two things and we are in between those two. But when we are among, when we use among, which is also a preposition, is because there's more than two, okay? So any questions so far? Preguntas hasta el momento. Yo solo quiero que me ponga un segundo la diapositiva anterior, teacher, para la para screenshot. Oh, you mean the, let me see, just let me go back. This one you mean? Thank you, teacher. Ah, okay. All right. So if there's if there's no questions, so we're going to move on to 
uh, the last one, which is the prepositions of place. As I told you guys, these prepositions are not, I mean, not that difficult to understand. And uh, some of them are repetitive because once again, here we have in. So as you can see, in and on sometimes are a little bit repetitive, but their meaning changes when they go from one preposition or from one type of preposition to another. So in this one, prepositions of, uh, of place, we can say that some prepositions here uh, or show, in this case, where something happens. That's the reason why we call them prepositions of time, or place, I'm sorry, my bad, because we want to know where something happens. So in this case, we have some examples such as under, underneath, over, inside, and beside, and also we have in. So we have the example, Sani, Sani was sitting under a tree. What do you guys understand by the preposition under? Bajo. 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 Yes, so we say Sani was sitting under a tree. Now we have number two, which it says, there's a wooden floor underneath the carpet. Have you ever heard underneath before or is, or is it the first time that you're listening to that preposition? I think that is por debajo. Por debajo, yes, exactly. Por debajo, that's, that's what it is. So it says there's a wooden floor underneath the carpet. So number three, some G's flew over their house. Over, what is over? Sobre. Sobre, exactly. Mm -hmm. John and Sarah were hiding inside the wardrobe. What's inside? Dentro. Dentro. Dentro, Dentro. yes. There was a tree beside the river. What's beside? Al lado de. Punto. Punto. Punto, yes. Uh -huh. I have a friend who lives in America. In America. N, yes, and this one is N. So as you can see, cuando hablábamos o cuando utilizamos in and preposition of time, changes. When we use in and preposition of place, changes. When we use in and prepositions of, uh, what, was, what was the other? I forgot. Let me just go back. Oh, of place. All right, yes. All right, so it changes a little bit. So now, guys, do you have any questions so far or, or is everything clear? I mean, I'm going a little bit fast because I'm pretty sure that this is very easy to understand. I mean, there's not like a grammatical rule or something that you have to put it here. What we read at the beginning is that it was next to, it can be either a verb or it can be either a noun. That's what we have to understand. That's the only thing that we have to understand that it's going to be next to either one of those. So there is not a, a specific or there's not a formula that you will have to remember because we will only have to know or to try to learn the prepositions and how we use them in different ways or in different types of the prepositions that we have in the English language. So do you guys have any questions so far or that's pretty clear by now? Okay, so I'm gonna take that as that's clear. So, prepositions of direction. How are we going to use those? As the name it says itself, directions. So we are going to use every single time that someone asks you, like, how do I get to? Como llego a tal lugar? How do I get to? So when someone asks you a question like that, it's like, for example, let's suppose that we are in San Salvador and we are in the savior of the world and we want to get like in galerias or something like that. So people who are who live since in Salvador, probably they are going to understand what I'm talking about. And so if someone asks you, how do I get to galerias? So if you are from the savior of the world, what are you going to say? So we, you will have to use prepositions of direction. Why? You will have to give some instructions to someone to get to the place. And here we have some prepositions, which are very, very common 
and the and directions. So we have the first one, which is above, across, along, among, around, at, behind, below, beside, close to, over, through, forward, up, down, between, by, inside or in, near, next to, on, off, past, under. So we have some examples here. Arriving, can you please go ahead and help me with number one? Yeah, they were traveling toward, towards London. They were traveling towards London. Thank you very much. Now, toward, what do you guys understand about that prepositions? Do you know the, the meaning of toward? Does any one of you know or not? Sorry. I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, tower is torre. No, that's tower. Tower? Behind. No, we Asia. say Asia. They were traveling toward London, Asia London, or Londres in that, in that case. So when we say towards, is Asia. It's not Torre, uh, Boris, because that's tower. You know, the tower, you know, and this is towards, which is completely different. Now, example number two, we say she likes being among people. We already know what among is, right? Entre, but a lot of people. So number three, that your house is next to the library. What is next to? Al lado de. Al lado de. Al lado de, yes. The dog is under the par. part. A la par de. Al lado de o a la par de, which is the same thing. Now, when we say the dog is, is under the red card, so we automatically know that under is debajo. So I left my purse behind. What is behind? Atrás. 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 Here, house, oh no, I'm sorry. That's, that's a problem there. Her house is across from mine. What is across? Cruzando. Cruzando. Across from my. Mm -hmm. So we saw a forest far below. Have you ever heard below before? Debajo. Debajo, o por debajo, far below. So my uncle lives close to the market. Close to? Cerca de. Cerca de. Cerca de. All right, so uh, those are the examples that we have, guys. As it says, or uh, the, the name of the prepositions are prepositions of direction. Those examples that we have here are going to always be very useful if someone asks you about, you know, a direction, a location, or if someone got lost in the middle of somewhere and they ask you, how do I get to, you know, to any place or something like that? you are going to use these type of prepositions of which are very useful when someone asks you something like that. So do you guys have any questions so far? Or that's very easy. Is it easy for you? It's clear. <laughs> clear, okay. So I'm gonna take that as a jest. So let me just stop sharing and we're just gonna go to one small practice, which is very easy. Just let me double check the information here. Oh my God, it's not working. Okay, there we go. Okay, here we have. We're just going to do that. So just let me show you what it is. Okay, this is the one we're just going to be working on. It's very easy. You just have to uh, try to find which is the right preposition that you will have to use. So just take a screenshot right now and we're going to move on very fast to the breakout rooms because we just have six minutes or five minutes. 
So remember, you just have to try to find which is the right preposition that you have to use there. So are we done with the screenshot? Okay, so I will take that as a yes. Hoy venimos como completamente en descanso, ¿verdad? Sabiendo que today is the last day, so nobody wants to, you know, to, to be here probably. All right, so uh, let's go ahead. I already create the groups. Go ahead and join your groups, guys, please. Remember to speak in English, please. What happened with you guys? Were, weren't you able to access your groups? I mean, Katia, I know that you were, you're sick, so it's fine for you, but Ingrid? My cousin lives in Norway. Lives, lives. Lives. My, cow, my cousin lives. My cousin lives in. Next, next, Norway. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Um, my cousin lives in someone else who wants to do it i don't like flying flying so i went to paris by bus mm. yeah Bypass. You can stay. You can stay. Number four, I want to carry the bus. Number five. To me, next to me. No, verdad. Hacia París. Um, went porque yo voy en bus a París. Maybe under. Uh, I don't like flying. I also went to Paris on on the on 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 bus. Under. Bye. <laughs> Bye, boss. Bye. Fly. Fly. I don't like fly. Fly. Oh. Yes, over, over, over. Number.
Okay, we're just going to wait for every one of your classmates to come back to the main session so we can start like at least to get one or two examples from this exercise. Okay, so now uh, everyone is coming back to the main session and I will ask for some help. Uh, Eri Bin, go ahead and help me with number one. Eri Bin, are you there? It's on teacher. So read the whole thing. Where do you come on? Sorry teacher, tenía el, el micrófono apagado. Where do you come from? Where do you come from? De donde vienes. Now, number two, uh, Alberto, Alberto Enrique. In. So read the whole thing. My cousin lives in Norway. My cousin lives in Norway. Now, number three, I would like to have Carlos Regalado. Carlos. Oh, I'm sorry. Number three. No, 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 the brink over the bridge over the oh. bridge mm. on the bridge to teach on i think it's on on the bridge yes o it is on the bridge we cannot on. podemos utilizar over porque si bien if you use over se si utilizas over porque estás sobre i mean but it doesn't it doesn't make sense so we, when we use the preposition we say on the bridge so in the last one, la última, Juan Eduardo. No, no, teacher, no, no. You didn't no, do team. it? You didn't? It's by teacher. By. So we'd bye, say, bye. I, I don't like flying, so I went to Paris by box. So that's it. So guys, uh, once again, before you go, lo que todos hayan terminado the platform. Because today at noon, well, at midnight, you will have calibration from, you know, administration and they are expecting for you to have finished uh, section number four. At least 80% of that. If you finished 100%, that's fine. So that's that's completely fine. So remember for next week, next week is going to be our last week. So we're having an exam Thursday next week, okay? Just as a matter of reminder. So thank you so much for attending today, guys, to the class. I hope you have a nice weekend and be careful, okay? So have a, have a good night. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Bye. 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 See you Bye. next